Valley Fresh Fair, featuring local restaurants, their owners, chefs, and great recipes made with Yakima Valley grown ingredients. Now here is hostess, Gayla Games. Hi, I'm Gayla Games. I'm your hostess with our new show, Valley Fresh Fair. We're here at the Farmer's Market in Yakima with our first guest, John Gasparetti, and he is going to tell us what he's going to be preparing for us. Well, you know what, I thought we might do, thank you for inviting me to the first show for KYVE. You. you know, I thought what we'll do is a little family recipe called chicken cacciatore, and I thought we'll get all the ingredients that we need here at this great market, and even throw in some salad and a few other things that we might do for the dinner. Sounds really good. What do you think? Should we go shopping? Let's go shopping. Let's go shopping. So John, what are you going to be looking for? Well, let's see. I need to get some peppers and some onions. Okay. And, what well, kind of onions are you shopping for today? Well, an onion, a yellow onion, but you know right now the Walla Walla sweets are really great. Oh, let's fabulous. get two Walla Walla I sweets. I love Walla Walla sweets. I have some little yellow zucchini. We'll look for some green zucchini great. as well. Look at these great peppers. Oh, they're absolutely Aren't they beautiful? beautiful. So you know, you in this recipe, you can use either the just the green, depending on the time of year, or you can use the red and green, or the combination of red, green, and yellow. Oh, that would be so festive. Wow, look at here, celery. That'll oh, gosh, be, it's gorgeous, Isn't John. it beautiful? That'll be great in our chicken cacciatore. Definitely. I can't wait to taste it. You know, I think to finish our dinner today, I think we need to have this beautiful oh, organic this lettuce. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, it is. All right, let's get the it. A nice vinaigrette. Here we are at your restaurant where the ambiance is as tasteful as your food, I must say. Thank you. Beautiful restaurant. And how long has the restaurant been here, John? The, the restaurant has been here since 1966 in this location. Mm -hmm. But my mother and father started the restaurant in Union Gap on about 1943. And then they retired in the early 60s. That's amazing. So I know. you've been in the business for about 67 years. In the valley, in yes. In the valley, yes. And the recipe that you are going to prepare for us is chicken cacciatore. Uh -huh. Why don't you pick that, Pete? Well, I chose chicken cacciatore because uh, folklore is that it was a Gasparetti who prepared chicken cacciatore in the early 1800s for Pope Pius VII. And uh, it was one of the dishes that he created. So, John, is that true? <laughs> Who's to prove that it isn't? I guess you're right about that. Right. So how many, uh, you are how many generations of Gasparis? I'm the fifth generation of restaurateurs in our family. That is amazing. I know. And I have to say, I'm kind of feeling pretty special about being part of the Gasparetti family when I came through the back door in 1969 and applied for a job. Oh, really? That yeah. was 1969. 1969. Wow. And there you were in the kitchen singing away. You had opera music playing and you were stirring really? a big pot of red sauce and singing opera. Do you really? still sing opera while you cook? No, not so much opera, but a little bit of Lady Gaga. Oh, great. <laughs> I think I'd rather hear the opera. Really? <laughs> Definitely. So you feature a lot of local artists. We do. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, wonderful. And um, let's see some of the other things that you do here at the restaurant besides your wonderful food. Well, let's talk about your menu. Besides chicken cacciatore, what are some of the other favorite family recipes that you Well, the, lo, quite a few of the family recipes are still, I prepare a lot of the sauces mm -hmm. and um, I thought that I learned through my father who taught me really how to cook. Wonderful. You know, my mother and father were both really good cooks, but my father was self-taught. My, uh, my father came to America when he was 19 and he uh, was at Ellis Island and came across the United States and ended up in Tacoma where my grandfather had a restaurant. And he worked with the, uh, my grandfather, Arcangelo Gasparetti, and then he went over and worked with the Gasparetti family that mm -hmm. had the Roma Cafe in um, Seattle, Seattle as well. He started out in Seattle with a bakery. Mm -hmm. He and a partner started a bakery in Seattle. And he lost his arm in a um, bakery accident. Mm -hmm. And they ended up moving to Yakima and ultimately started the restaurant in Union Gap. 
What a history. And I do remember your dad and mom. That was also wonderful for me to know those two. Your dad had a great sense of humor. And one of the favorite things I remember he prepared was the crab cioppino. Right. Which you do a lot still during the holidays. I do. And also your pizza, the traditional pizza. Oh, you can't beat that with the anchovies and right. absolutely excellent. We try to keep things current and probably a lot of, I, I believe in keeping some of the family history in a lot of the dishes that we created mm -hmm. and originally and incorporating some of the new trends and whatever as well. But, um, you know, the, the one thing that my father did teach me about cooking is that there's the passion for cooking is not only just in the recipe, it from, comes from the heart as well. So your passion for cooking comes from your dad taught you and your mom, but then also mm -hmm. you to continue with it. What What's the reasoning for that? My passion for cooking is um, is the fact that it has to come from within. It's mm -hmm. sort of a, something that you feel or with your heart you, you cook. And that I learned through my father who used to create dishes and do it with uh, a pinch of this and a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and the one thing I did learn th from him as well as my mother was the fact that you cook and the recipe I'm giving you mm -hmm. today will be a recipe that is only a guideline and you can certainly use that guideline as it is but also be creative with it. Absolutely. And so when someone says a dash of this or a pinch of that, you can do that, but then once you're comfortable with it, move on with it and, and do something created under your, as your special. Recipe. In other words, everyone that loves to cook should put a little bit of themselves sure. into that recipe. Right. And, 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 be, and get a little imagination yes. in it. Yes. If it works, it works. If it Absolutely. doesn't, mm -hmm. then you do it differently the next time. And of course, along with your talent of cooking, you also have another wonderful talent. I mean, there's so many, but then you also <laughs> sing and dance. I do sing, and mm -hmm. I don't know about the dancing, oh, I but you. I wish I could, but <laughs> dancing, uh, singing, we do a cabaret show here starting after uh, Thanksgiving Fabulous. through the month of December, yes. It started actually when we were honoring my mom and dad for being, uh, for having been in the valley for 50 years, and um, so we started this little cabaret show, and uh, that was 15, 16 years ago uh -huh. now, so. I remember that, and very popular. Yes, uh, you I fill know. the house. How many nights do you usually, does that usually run? We do it about five nights a week. Okay, yeah. that is super. The place is packed every night. It's very fun. Very fun, yeah. You are a performer, not only in the kitchen, but elsewhere, and you are such a gracious host. I think that's also a reason people keep coming back here. They know you so well because you welcome them. You make people feel, I remember when I worked for you, you said you always, you always told me to treat people as if they were a friend. That's right. And you do that. You just or greet my, everyone. My mother yeah. used to say is to treat people like they're a guest in your home. Absolutely. Definitely. And Gasparetti's restaurant does do that. Thank always you. feels so welcome here. Thank you. Not only in the ambiance, but you, the people that work for you, you can tell that everyone cares. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Cheers. John. Cheers to you. Hello and welcome to our Valley Fresh Fair kitchen. John, what do you think? Should we start cooking? Let's do. Okay, great. Gavin, would you mind grabbing me the uh, chicken out of the refrigerator? Definitely and I'm going to turn the heat I'm here on for about you. medium heat. This is going to be like you're the boss of me again. So I have just enough oil to uh, cover the bottom of the um, pan. And now we're going to put these in here on in about medium high heat. And I think we probably turn that, that up just, just a, a little, little bit. Yep, we could. Let's do that. Oh, I like the sound of that much better, much better. And the last one. Okay. <clears throat> It smells good already. And just lightly flour these. These don't have to be uh, flour just a light heavily. dusting of flour. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm going to go wash my hands. Very good. And while you do that, I'll watch the chicken. All right. Very important to wash our hands after handling chicken. Yes, it is. 
So we've got the chicken cooking yes, away. Yes, and now we're going to add, add a little bit of salt and pepper. Okay. Just salt and pepper. That's wow. That's all there is. Okay. And salt and pepper. Beautiful. And we're going to let that lightly brown. And while we're browning that chicken, I think we're going to get everything else ready. Sounds For instance, good. we need onions and parsley. Okay. Very good. Which I have chopped already. And it's about chopped like medium or small, uh, medium to small, with some parsley. Well, I really like to get everything ready prior to us uh, putting everything together. Okay. So while that is browning, we're going to get everything else ready that we need all the other ingredients. Oh, they're beautiful. So they are pretty, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We're going to put the onions of parsley that we have chopped. Very good. We'll Perfect. Put right over there. Yeah. This is celery that we have simply, this is about three stalks of celery, and it has been washed and a cut into a diagonal <clears throat> slices. The zucchini, we're going to do about the same way. This is one zucchini. I'm going to show you on the sucker bun how to do that. And you know, you can use uh, the zucchini to, in the, the fall if you prefer to use uh, Yellow zucchini, mm -hmm. when they're available, you can. Today we're using red and green peppers because the market had them. But if they didn't, you could only use green peppers if you choose to, mm -hmm. or just red peppers. So the zucchini are done, and we're gonna put those okay. over there. Yes. <clears throat> and now we're gonna do the red and green peppers. Very right. colorful. We're gonna cut them about in that width. Okay. So we're going to take it and simply do this. Wonderful. Oh, the smells are just Smells beautiful. good, doesn't it? Yes. So it's very, very warm and cozy for this time of year. Right. Are you liking the brownness on this chicken? Oh, a little bit more. Very good. Okay, our peppers are done. So now we have everything ready, essentially. Perfect. We have the onions, the parsley, the celery, the zucchini, and our peppers. And now we'll wait for the chicken okay. to brown. And, and while we're do doing that, do we're going to do the tomatoes. Perfect. I like to do mine in the Cuisinart. So we're going to take, I use the Cuisinart to chop the tomatoes. It's a can, uh, two cans of whole tomatoes okay. with the sauce. And um, you simply dump it all in the, the uh, Cuisinart. Mm -hmm. And Beautiful. I recommend, because my mother would kill me if she didn't, uh, if we didn't, rinse there the bowl out. Too many. Yeah. Would she be proud of us? Take this out of the way, please, sir. And we're going to pulsate this for three times. One, two, three. Okay. So we have a little chunk in there still, right? Because then we're going still, to right? do it with all, oh, right? We don't want to puree it too fine. Sorry. And now we're going to rinse this out as well, just to get a little of the last of the remnant of the tomato in there. Don't want to waste it while you're How doing are you that. that. Good job on that. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you so much. Very nice. I, I do my best. See that? Very <laughs> nicely done. And obviously, what for a large chicken breast, this mm -hmm. is a recipe for four people. Oh, they're gorgeous. It's a huge, uh, beautiful breast. And we're going to just let that brown a little bit on that side, and then we're going to get our onions and parsley, and we're going to do our vegetables, and Perfect. then we'll put the chicken back. So although it's not all the way cooked through, it is mm -hmm. browned on both sides nicely. Okay. We're going to put it, transfer it onto this platter. And now we're going to start adding all of our okay. vegetables. Together, would you mind putting just a little more olive oil on the bottom of that? Absolutely just another maybe not. two tablespoons all or so. Or about little, there. About that. Is that good? That's good. Okay. <clears throat> now we're going to add, this is one medium onion and a half a bunch of parsley that has been chopped. We're going to saute that. And we're still on medium heat? Still medium heat. Okay. Right. I think that's good. Mm. And actually, we don't even need all of it. Okay. That's plenty. And we're going to just 
uh, saute that just a little bit until we sweat the onions sweat a little bit. Sweat those onions. And I am going to add a little more oil because, just because. Okay. I think we can clean it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Set up? Yep. There it is. You want to go to, uh-huh, there you go. Perfect. All right, those have been sweating a little longer, mm. but now we're going to add the red peppers and the um, green. green peppers, the bell peppers, and we have one of each. We'll add those into that. Okay. There are two uh, medium-sized zucchini that we're going to add in. And this is approximately three stalks of celery that okay. we've added. So now we're going to saute that a little more. I love cooking with you. You do. It's, so easy, it's so easy for me. <laughs> but while you're working so hard, let me take these for you and put them in the oh, kitchen. Thank you. In the dishwasher. I'm going to add a little bit of salt to this. A little pinch. Okay. A little pinch of pepper. Beautiful. I'm just going to saute that. For about how many minutes? Well, really, uh, I like to saute them for about probably two or three minutes until it just so softens just a little bit. Okay. So now we've really, we've cooked this for about three, four minutes and then the vegetables have just started to uh, saute a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to add the, the two cans of chopped tomatoes. Okay. Now, you know, I'm going to have you Hand mm -hmm. me that little consomme or a little water that's right below yes, there. Yes, indeed. And we're going to rinse out this bowl right there. There you are. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Again, a mini. That's right. Absolutely. My mother would be so proud, wouldn't she? She would. Now at this point, we're going to add some very fine Italian oh, wine. Oh, may I see? Oh, yes, it's very quite good. fine wine, I must say. Mm. Yes. It is a very fine wine. It I is. I do fine enjoy wine. that wine. So we don't put a lot in. Of course, it will cook out if someone's worried about for children and whatever, but it will cook out. If you don't mm. want to use wine, you don't have to, mm -hmm. but uh, okay. we added just a little. Also, I should add a little bit of the fresh, the fresh sage. Oh, this is beautiful. Isn't sage, it beautiful, yes. leaves? This is from my garden, and all I'm going to oh, add is probably, and I add the whole leaves to this. Okay, wow. So you don't chop those, you just no, add I the don't. whole sage leaf. No, I add the whole sage leaf. Okay. Oh, now if you to could this, smell we're going to add the chicken. Okay. Let me get that a little closer Back for in. you in case it's still and alive and add jumps add out of the pot. <laughs> You never know. You never know. I'm going to add the chicken. Do you have it? I've got it. Mm -hmm. And turn it upside mm. down. I like to turn that. This pen might be a little small for this large that chicken. Big bird. Okay, we're going to turn the heat down so that it'll just slowly simmer. And we're going to let that simmer for about 20 minutes, half hour, okay. or until the temperature of the chicken reaches 165. Very important. Now I'm going to take the lid off because uh -huh. this is now simmering nicely and we're going to let it just simmer. Okay, perfect. And we don't need to keep the lid on there. So it Let's can just, just simmer sure. away without the lid. Yes. And the juices won't disappear. No, Wonderful. We want it to just thicken up a little bit. Okay. Doesn't it smell good? Oh, John, it smells so good. I know. What are we going to have to go with this? I think what I'm going to do, what I like to do with this, is really just a simple green salad. Okay. And um, give it, would you mind giving me the Not lettuce? Not at all. And the um, only thing I'm going to do is I'm slicing some little fresh cucumbers, thin, like this. Perfect. Like this. And I think that's enough. And we're going to just put those over it, okay? And, and this what kind is of lettuce are you well, using? this is bib lettuce or butter lettuce. Uh -huh. I I I like, really prefer to use that. Fabulous. And I leave it in larger chunks. <clears throat> this is a very basic uh, salad. This is sort of my everyday salad uh -huh. that we do. Oh, I think it'll accompany the chicken beautifully because there are so many vegetables in the chicken and your seasonings. 
that a salad that's a little more Well, delicate. it's just fresh. It shouldn't yeah. really compete with what Definitely. you want with the main entree. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do this. Probably I would do this as a first course. You can certainly do it along, uh, if you want to just do a, do mm -hmm. it with the chicken you may, but um, whatever way you want to do it. And if you want to add, I didn't add tomatoes to it because there's tomatoes cooking in Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So I thought just the cucumbers oh, would be simple. Mm -hmm. I am getting so hungry, John. Are These you? smells are just mm, heavenly. They're just drifting through our kitchen. So a simple butter lettuce, bib lettuce, and we're going to put just a, a really good olive oil I recommend. And it's usually three to one. I usually eyeball it, just mm -hmm. enough like this. A light, go in a little sorry, sea to, salt. Three to one, fabulous. three to one oil okay. to one part of vinegar. vinegar. Perfect, okay. And a little fresh ground pepper, olive oil, and then just generic just red wine uh -huh. vinegar. And nothing of any, we don't need the balsamic. This is just fresh. Wonderful. That's one of my favorite vinegars. I use that at home all the time. If you would like to use a little bit of garlic in this, you mm -hmm. may. Wonderful. I don't think that is really necessary. That's it. And then Perfect. what we're going to do with the little cucumbers is just put those right over the top. And then everyone will get a mm. little cucumber. It smells so Doesn't good. Doesn't that smell good? Yes. There you go. So, so good. That's it. So we have our chicken Just cacciatore. So now the chicken is done, and I believe we can start plating this. Fabulous. And so now it's time to start plating up this delicious meal. Isn't it? Your mouth, Wonderful. is it just watering? It is, uh, absolutely. So we have the lovely salad. Get those juices flowing. There Beautiful. And we're serving this today with the... Uh, Polenta. This mm -hmm. is a little pesto polenta, and we'll be able to get that recipe online. Wonderful. I see you brought some wonderful wine for us too, John. Well, I did. It is uh, our private label at the restaurant. It's bottled for us by Bonaire Winery, and it, this is a Cab Merlot. Oh, fabulous I think blends. it'll go quite nicely with this dish. John, this looks so delicious. I Thank can't you. wait to dig in. Now, exactly what does cacciatore mean? Well, cacciatore in Italian means hunter style. So traditionally, you could do it with anything that is uh, that the hunters would catch, mm -hmm. uh, pheasant, quail, even rabbit, or chicken. Okay. It's always delicious with this. You could use chicken thighs if you prefer. Mm -hmm. And if you also prefer to use the boneless chicken breasts, okay. you may do it, but you're go really going to have to regulate your cooking time, mm -hmm. which means that you might want to start the sauce and then add your chicken in a little later okay. so that the, because the uh, boneless chicken breasts have a tendency of getting a little rubbery if you cook them too long. Right. On the bone is definitely more tender. It is. And, what and it has the flavor. Absolutely. Recommend. <clears throat> And I think it's such a lovely uh, dish to prepare. You can even prepare other things for your uh, meal for your friends that evening. And well, it gives for you the time evening, because it's cooking really, on the stove with not needing a lot of attention. It doesn't. And you can also do this the day before mm -hmm. oh, and then okay. transfer it into a casserole, uh -huh. refrigerate it, and then pull it out and warm it in the oven for Wonderful. about a half hour. Uh, probably I would uh, cover it for maybe the first 15 minutes and then uncover it mm -hmm. and cook it through, or warm it through, I should say. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's so, for company, it, it is a... Um, a perfect dish. It is. Definitely. With this recipe, if you choose to add um, olives, a lot of people oh, okay. would want to add olives. Uh -huh. Or if you wanted to add even fresh mushrooms if they were in the season, uh, some firm okay. mushrooms, you may add that as well. So there's but a lot of choices. It, there are a few choices, yes. Mm -hmm. that you Everybody can, can experiment a little and sure. see what tastes best for them. That's what it's about. Definitely. Well, that's what, what do you think? About. Should we dig in? Well, that's too. I'm okay. anxious for you to Perfect. try Perfect. I'm very anxious also. Okay. There you go. Mm. That is fabulous. I try it with a little of the polenta, too. Okay. It should be really good. Polenta is one of my favorite things. Good. That is very tasty. We are all about cooking food that is good for you, and this definitely is good for us.
For this recipe, including the variations, go to our website at kyve.org or ybmh.org. Our chicken cacciatore recipe has for four people, four chicken breast, and you want one onion medium, and you want a half a bunch of chopped parsley, three celeries, two peppers if they are medium size or if they're large, one pepper will work, two zucchinis, small, and if it's large, one zucchini, two 16 ounce cans of tomatoes with juice pulsed in the Cuisinart three times. You want sage to taste, and that will give you a wonderful chicken cacciatore recipe. John, thank you for being Valley Fresh Fair's first guest. Well, my pleasure. It was great. To you and thank to you Valley very Fresh. Much. Absolutely. Cheers. For more information on today's show, including recipes, go to kyve.org. Valley Fresh Fair is underwritten by Yakima Valley Memorial Hospital to better serve our community. Thanks also to Julie Tony, Fickle and Son Construction, Bemis Appliance, and Yakima Valley Museum.